Hey there friends, it's Megan Andrew and thanks for joining me on the SCT YouTube channel today. I'm going to be creating a traveler's notebook spread today using scrapbook.com exclusive products and I'm really excited about it. These traveler's notebook spreads that I create live in this album from Citrus Twist Kits. I have already cut my base pages using pebble cardstock from Concord and Ninth. It's a really great neutral and it works so well with this new cozy patterned paper pad from scrapbook.com. I love their exclusive uh, designs. The colors are beautiful. I'm also going to be working with some coordinating products like these cozy sentiments and critter stamp, the grateful sentiments, cozy autumn rub-ons which I think are just fantastic and the cozy foliage shape dies. Those are great for autumn or winter. I also have the brand new Rose Quartz Misty. Uh, that's an exclusive between scrapbook.com and my sweet petunia that you don't want to miss. Okay so the first thing that I'm going to do is pull out some of the papers that are inspiring me from my photos. I have two photos here printed at three inches by five inches and I love that size for my traveler's notebook. I feel like it just works really well. I love to have pattern fill up one side of my spread and this plaid reminds me of a Davenport my grandmother had back in the early 80s and I just love it. I think it's the most fantastic thing ever. I want to see a little bit of that pebble cardstock from Concord and Ninth um, around it so I'm just trimming that and I'm trimming it so that the plaid is a little bit more even. If I had just done it from the edge it wouldn't have been even um, and so I just trimmed about a quarter of an inch from all sides there to make that give that a nice uh, frame around that plaid design. Okay next I'm grabbing my scrapbook.com exclusive small precision scissors. I'm going to rough up those edges and then I'm going to use the uh, pebble ink from Concord and Ninth and my scrapbook.com ink blending tool with the domed foam applicators to add some ink there and that's going to really give some nice shading around that pattern paper. I wanted to add even more texture so I grabbed my sewing machine and off camera sewed around the edge of that pattern paper. Now I'm grabbing my foliage shape dies. Now these are fantastic and I'm just choosing about four of the leaves that look the most um, autumnal and I am using that little strip that I have of the plaid because I waste nothing and my my tape from scrapbook.com which I love this tape it is so great for die cutting and I'm holding down that little strip and getting as much as I can from those leaves. Now these leaves are going to go on the left side of my spread just along the edge so if it cuts off a, a leaf a little bit that's not a big deal at all. I really do love the brown on the back of that so I, I think I'm going to have to use another sheet. Now I'm just going through and using the papers that I chose before to die cut even more leaves and I'm thinking about using the front and the back of those because double-sided paper how awesome is that and I also love that these have a solid on some of the backs um, because that's so helpful when you need uh, you know a solid cardstock to coordinate with your project. This blue is just the perfect, uh, the perfect contrast to those warmer oranges and yellows and I love that little pattern on there so I definitely am using the blue going back in with the brown and the greatest thing about these leaves is that it embosses as it cuts you'll see the veins are embossed it's just they're really really stunning. So now I'm going to arrange my leaves the way that I like them along that left edge. Now what I'm doing here is creating a sense of balance because I have a lot going on on the right side with that plaid pattern and not a lot going on on the left. And so I want to balance all the visual weight on that right side with these leaves on the left side. So it's going to add texture, it's going to add pattern, it's going to add lots of color. Now before I get these adhered down, I'm again using my ink blending tool um, with the pebble cardstock from Con sorry pebble ink from Concord and Ninth and I am inking up those edges to give them a bit more dimension a little bit of a grungy look. I don't uh, do that very often but there's something about 
fall projects that makes me want to ink up those edges. I really like the look of it. Um, plus it helps them to pop more off of that pebble background. So really, really love the way this is coming together. I'm arranging these leaves, making sure that I don't have the same leaf next to um, the same leaf, just in a different pattern, and just kind of trying to find a pleasing way to arrange everything. I'm using uh, my deluxe uh, tape runner here from scrapbook.com. That's another exclusive and it's fabulous to adhere those to that pebble background. Now, on the right side, I added some foam adhesive, and later on, I will have to take up that foam adhesive because I decided to make a pocket out of that photo. So that was a bit preemptive, but it's okay. It happens. I have two die cut leaves on that right side just to add a, a touch of leaf on that side. Now, I really love these rub-ons and that fall word is really calling to me. So right now I'm getting the fall word where I want it on my layout, putting that in my Rose Quartz Misty. And then I'm grabbing uh, the Hello from the Cozy Sentiments and Critters stamp to add that above the word fall. So I removed my rub on, I got my stamp in place and now I'm ready to stamp. I'm inking this word up with a really beautiful brown from Concord and Ninth called Nutmeg. It's, it's perfect. So now I have the hello and now I just need to add uh, another stamp down here. I'm going to do love you. So you could say I love my son because he's in this photo or I love fall. I think it's more I love fall. I love my son too but I think this is really about the start of fall for us. So I'm getting my rub on in place here. Sorry about my head there. Just want to make sure I get it in the right spot. And I'm using a bone folder here to just make sure I have that down. Now, if you're not sure, just start to pull it up and see where uh, where you have gaps, then rub it a little bit more and it should go on straight away. Again, I'm using my deluxe adhesive roller there to adhere this photo down. And then I'm gonna trim off the excess leaves from the edge of the pebble cardstock. How pretty is that? So here I am <laughs> making a pocket from my other photo here. So I just had to pull up the dimensional foam adhesive and put those strips down on the side so that I made a nice little pocket. And I found the Bungalow Lane collection embellishments in my stash that coordinated just perfectly with these scrapbook.com exclusives. I love when I can use up something from my stash with new products that I have on hand. And I'm adding this cozy, simple, happy tag below and the journaling spot fits into my pocket at the top. Now the last little step is going to be adding a few more of those fantastic uh, autumn rub-ons and I'm going to do the maple leaf here. I'm going to do a really tiny little heart on the right side of the photo on the right and a larger heart to the left of the love you stamped sentiment. I just love these rub-ons. They're probably my favorite item um, in everything I've worked with today. Rub-ons are back and they are so much better. Uh, they have a beautiful matte finish. They go on easily and I can't recommend them enough. And with that, I have completed my Traveler's Notebook spread. I really, really love these beautiful exclusives from scrapbook.com and they made this traveler's notebook spread come together so easily with their beautiful rich fall colors and patterns easy to use rub-ons and uh, stamps as well I added my journaling typed after this video so you guys can see that there and I just love that I was able to use something from my stash to get it out of the way and combine it with something new. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out my blog post today to see all of the products that I used in this process video and that's linked in the video details below. And don't forget to subscribe to Scrapbook and Cards today here on YouTube so you can find more inspiration. Thanks so much for watching and happy creating.